Welcome to the Canadian Business Quarterly Podcast, where we speak with Canada's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Brandon Martin, CEO of Hinton Scaffold Solutions. Hinton Scaffold Solutions is a highly innovative industrial scaffolding solution company. And Brandon has been working in heavy industrial for nearly two decades. He studied project management at the Edwards School of Business and is relatively self-taught in software coding. He also sits on a non-profit board for bringing technology to trades using his virtual reality construction courses. However, as a new father to a little girl, he spends whatever spare time available with family. Brandon, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So can you give us an overview of the Hinton Scaffold Solutions business? Yeah. Uh, Hinton Scaffold is a Canadian-based scaffold solutions and training provider. Uh, We perform work on major projects from potash mines to oil and gas um, to mineral, um, mineral mines as well. Uh, our team has always been uh, driven by strong safety culture as a, as a trade that performs some of the highest risk on a job site. So we bring that safety out to uh, everybody else. So within that then, what are the scope of, of services that you provide? Right. Um, that could be a pretty big long, laundry list, but uh, we, do, we do mainly focus on access scaffold solutions. However, we, uh, along with that, especially in the industrial realm, uh, there's a lot of management solutions that go with that. Uh, but as a as a tech forward company, we we provide 3D and virtual reality and AR services as well. Uh, of course, with our access solutions, we have material uh, scaffold rental that goes with that engineering, planning, and consulting, uh, and of course the labor workforce uh, as well. You know, we don't interview uh, too many scaffolding companies, so it'll be interesting to understand. You know, what makes you think. Uh, or, or what makes your, your services different to other competitors in your space? Absolutely. Uh, and that was uh, some of the uh, reasons why we even started our, our business to begin with. We are a incredibly safety-focused uh, company. Uh, we have a mandate internally to uh, have all of our executive team and uh, frontline workers to be NCSOs. That's a National Construction Safety Officer. It's a process that uh, puts people through a number of courses to uh, enhance their leadership skills on site. Um, With that, though, we we bring um, technology to the forefront in in our planning services as well as our our execution. Uh, And that's something that we find is rare on site to see technology use in the field. Okay. And so you've done a range of projects. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them and how this technology integrates with that? Sure. We've had a lot of uh, projects uh, in our repertoire, but I, I could think of one of the most interesting ones for me to share would be a scaffold that we had hanging about three stories down from an 80-ton overhead crane that is about 120 feet in the air. The use of the technology was that we would work with the client and the model of the project that they had to design uh, with our engineers the this this very unique hanging scaffold that would be affixed to this crane that would be moving uh, while people could perform the work off the side uh, of this scaffold. So we were able to put it into a drawing and a model that people could actually work around and look to see if there were any collisions or or issues um, for both the client, the crane engineers, our engineers, and, and the whole team together. Right. Okay. So when we're looking at these sorts of projects, what what is the scope of them then? How how long would you actually be working on site doing some of this stuff? Right. Uh, That is a a complete range. Uh, We we could be on site uh, for, you know, a few days uh, for some of the more simpler ones like uh, small tanks and things like that. But uh, uh, often you could be on a project for for many years. Maintenance contracts typically, you know, will be a three-year contract that gets renewed over over time. So, uh, we have our teams sort of across uh, the country on site at all times. All right. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned safety earlier. I remember when we uh, initially spoke about looking at doing this interview with you. You had said something that your management team maintains a fifty percent 
NCSO, which I believe is tied to safety. Do you, do you want to just explain to us again what that means? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, NCSO is now a nationally recognized designation. Um, each province in Canada had had its own designation that you would go through. Uh, but once you you achieve it in one province, it it's now used across um, across all of them, right. uh, or at least is recognized. And and what it tells people is that this individual, and it's sort of uh, the the I would say the foundation of of starting a career in safety specifically. But mm-hmm. it tells people that they've done at least these basic principles uh, of understanding, um, you, you know, the regulations and acts uh, in the province. Uh, as well as, you know, for the trades, um, understanding a level of safety for competency on a job site. So their NCSOs are typically resources on site uh, that people can go to to better understand how they can perform work safely. So we feel that uh, it's important that our management teams do go through this process uh, as an individual with our company so that they they have that understanding what it means to for everybody on site for safety. So they're not just looking out for themselves in the job, uh, but they're really thinking about everybody on the job and uh, how safety can apply for everybody to go home safely. And so what does that mean for your business in, in the longer term? Where are you guys headed? Right. Uh, we, you know, we, we plan to grow like any business does. Um, for us, it really is a, a journey to zero, zero incidents. As you mentioned right at the beginning, uh, I go to work thinking about every day, uh, that I'm coming home to my family. And I, I have to believe that everybody has that uh, same mindset. And mm-hmm. and so for our company, um, we are pushing boundaries of, of what training actually means. You know, a, you get a lot of your training typically on site. And uh, that puts people in already in the position of being in harm's way while they get their training, potentially. Um, we do have things around that protect people as they, they go through training and, and earn their time on site. Uh, but we've we found that technology has the ability to give us that platform to put people in a safe environment. Uh, this is through our use of virtual reality. We can put these people in a safe environment, provide training, repeat that training um, if if someone feels the need to, and uh, get people to a level of comfort where they understand the tasks they're performing or as they enter the job what risks they're in going to encounter so that they can better protect themselves and the others around them. Uh, so for us as a company in growth, we feel that we can, we can continue to enhance uh, the way we train and attract people into the industry to begin with. Well, let's move it to there before we finish up today. So what is happening at an industry level currently that, that you could share with us? Right. You know, I think today the labor market is seeing a ever increasing gap uh, of uh, who's getting involved in the trades. We're losing people to other uh, avenues of work. And it's a very lucrative and safe industry to be a part of in construction. So we're working on attracting people to the industry by the use of our technology. And we're seeing the adoption of it, where historically, um, like I said, technology in the field was less inclined. It was looked at as more of a distraction. We're actually now seeing the use of tablets with information on them, very valuable information on them, uh, being used in the field daily, and uh, you know, using uh, Rise, which is our platform, realistic immersive safety education. Uh, our virtual reality it provides people interactive uh, scenarios that they they can learn the job uh, that they're going to perform or or protect themselves from the hazards that are that are being presented to them. Okay. Look, before we finish up today. Brendan, is there anything else that you might like to add? Uh, you know, I, I do appreciate your time today and everybody who's listening. And, uh, you know, we we really do believe that safety is a primary focus uh, and scaffolding has the ability to give all workers safe access to their work front. Uh, we did start recently uh, our nonprofit Tech to Trades to lead training opportunities for attracting uh, youth, women, and typically marginalized individuals into the trades. And we're also working with youth uh, justice organizations to provide training to incarcerated individuals uh, so that they have an awareness of the opportunities available to them uh, once they get out. So uh, again, I just wanted to say thank you for your time today and uh, listening to me speak and uh, look forward to hearing from people in the future. Excellent. Thank you.
This has been a production of the Canadian Business Quarterly, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Canadian Business Quarterly, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe.